Right, so starting and growing this YouTube channel has, thanks to you guys, completely and utterly changed my life. For the first three years while I was on YouTube, I grew from zero to 1.2 million subscribers. That was while having a full-time job. And since then, and going all in on this internet business, author, podcaster, YouTuber-y type stuff, I've still only really spent somewhere between three and 10 hours per week on my YouTube channel. And so in this video, I wanna break down the different ways that I was thinking about this in terms of building systems and leverage and how I was able to make the most of my time and energy, especially in those early days when I had a full-time job and I was trying to grow this as a side hustle. We got this. Have a sip of coffee. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So this video is gonna be a breakdown of the framework that I used to grow this YouTube channel to pretty big levels in my spare time. Part one, the YouTube and business success framework. So success on YouTube and success in business generally, I think can be boiled down to three things. Firstly, you've got to do the right things. And this is sometimes known as strategy. Secondly, you have to do those things right, which is sometimes known as execution. And thirdly, you have to do those things for a long time. And this is often known as consistency. Now with this magical ingredient combination of strategy, execution, and consistency, you can make any business, including a YouTube channel, including any creative endeavor, any tech company, any business at all, that's what it takes for a business to grow and to flourish. And obviously there is an element of luck involved with all of this kind of business and YouTube success, but actually the right strategy, reasonable execution and reasonable consistency, all of these things increase your odds of getting lucky. And I like to think of strategy, execution and consistency as the three levers of success. If you pull these levers in a right way, you're massively increasing the odds and the probability that you're gonna succeed in whatever endeavor you set your mind to. But if we wanna pull these levers, then we need to input a few different ingredients. And some of the ingredients that go into these three levers of success are number one, skill, number two, time, number three, energy, and sometimes number four, money. Now, there are some businesses that take quite a lot of money to get started with. Like if you open a restaurant, you can't do that without money. And so you need to get investors in and all that kind of fun stuff. YouTube, thankfully, is not one of those. You don't need a lot of money to at least get started with a YouTube channel. You can start inputting money further down the line in terms of outsourcing and upgrading your gear and all this fun stuff, but you really don't need it to get started. There are also some businesses that take quite a lot of skill and that skill has gatekeepers in it. For example, if you decided you wanted to start a business of being a private neurosurgeon, there's not a lot you can do about that if you're just sitting in your bedroom trying to learn on the internet because you need a qualification, and rightly so, and you need years and years of training beyond medical school to be able to even qualify for the thing. And so it's actually a very high skill barrier to getting into becoming a neurosurgeon. And for a business like a YouTube channel, yes, you need quite a lot of skill in that you need to know the skill of making videos and public speaking and talking to a camera and editing and all that stuff. But crucially, learning that skill, you can learn on the internet for free. It does not have any gatekeepers. You do not have to apply to YouTube school. Literally anyone in the world with access to a phone and an internet connection can learn the skills needed to be a YouTuber. And so really the only real thing that holds people back is these two things, time and energy. Because fundamentally, if you had time and energy, you could learn the skill. And if you had loads of time and energy, you could also make the money that you need to because often money is an exchange of time, value, all that fun stuff. And if you want to succeed in business or with a YouTube channel in your spare time, you need to find a way to make the most of your limited time and energy. Like for example, if you had unlimited time and unlimited energy, Honestly, it would not be that hard growing a YouTube channel. You would just put in tons and tons of work. And actually people like Mr. Beast have basically put unlimited amounts of time and energy to grow their channels from zero to absolutely insane levels. But it's a lot harder to actually do that stuff in your spare time because obviously your time is limited because you have a day job. And also because you have a full-time job, it's sometimes hard to get home and have enough energy to sit down and like, spiel to the camera or sit down and spend eight hours editing a video. And so when I was first starting this channel in my final year of med school, I knew that the three things I needed were strategy, execution, and consistency. And I knew that I had very limited time and very limited energy. And the two main ways that I found to make the most of my time and energy were firstly, leverage, and secondly, personal productivity. Part two, how to make the most of your time and energy by applying leverage. All right, so firstly, what do we mean by leverage? Leverage is basically where you put in the same amount of work as someone else, but if you have more leverage, that means that your input of work gets more output than the other person's input of work. It's like having a tractor, for example. A tractor is a form of leverage within agriculture. Before the tractor was invented, people had to hoe and sow and rake and hake the land completely by hand. And so a single person could only do so much work in a given day. But then you plop that person on top of a tractor and now that same person can do the work of a hundred people in a single day. And the tractor is a form of leverage. The person is still doing one day's worth of work, but they're getting 100 days worth of output by using a tractor rather than by using a rake and a hake. And when it comes to YouTube and business in general, there are two main things that you can do to increase your leverage. The first one is by building systems. Now this is what I learned from reading this 
freaking amazing book, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It, the world's number one small business guru. Honestly, if I'd known I'd be raving about a book like this a few years ago, I'd have thought I was mental because this looks like one of those boring business books. It's, it's, it's not boring at all. It's just so good. It's like incredibly exciting because it talks about the power of systems and the power of leverage. And one of the stories that he talks about in the book is the incredible example of McDonald's. Now, McDonald's is sick because basically any McDonald's you go to in the world from Alaska to Pakistan to Timbuktu, you get basically the same experience. You can get the same Big Mac, you can get the same fries, you can get the same drink. And the reason McDonald's is such a powerful franchise along with Starbucks and any other kind of franchise model is because they've created systems. There is a system in McDonald's for frying the sausage. There is a system for building the burgers. There is a system for toasting the thing. There's a system for literally everything. McDonald's employees get like a massive ass handbook, which talks all about the systems and operations and processes that are involved in McDonald's. And this is how businesses grow. Businesses grow by building systems and operations. And it can sound boring. And it certainly sounded boring to me back in the day. But then I applied it to my YouTube channel. And I was like, oh my God, systems are changing my life. And even in medicine, we have systems for everything. If you have a system, if you have a checklist, if you have a step of processes to follow, now all of a sudden, the same person can do more work because they have a system that's helping them, that's providing leverage. So they don't have to think about every step in the hierarchy. And so the question we want to be asking ourselves, and especially the question I found myself asking a lot after reading the E-Myth Revisited is, how can I build systems to increase my leverage when it comes to my YouTube channel? And so over time, I've built a system for idea generation. I've built a system for scripting my videos. I've got a system for like titles and thumbnails. If you look on the channel, a lot of the thumbnails look fairly similar. That's because there's a system. There is a tool, there is a template. I don't need to try and reinvent the wheel every time I make a thumbnail, because that's a waste of time. Yes, if I had, 80 hours, 100 hours, 150 hours a week to apply to my YouTube channel, then yeah, maybe I'd have different thumbnails for every video. But broadly, no one really cares if the thumbnails are the same. Similarly, over time, I developed a system for editing the videos and for templates and for using the same color grade every time. And by learning these sort of tricks and techniques over the first couple of years of growing the channel, I realized that actually I could spend less time and energy doing the work because the system would take care of quite a lot of the process along the way. If you're interested in learning more about systems, by the way, this is exactly the stuff we teach on my part-time YouTuber Academy, link down below if you wanna check it out. But the second main way that we can apply leverage is people. Now, people are an incredible form of leverage because if you, again, imagine the McDonald's scenario, it's not like Ronald McDonald is sitting there in all 5 million franchises of McDonald's making the hamburgers, that just would not work. Ronald McDonald has hired a bunch of people to be able to enter the system and to be able to do the thing and follow the steps. And now Ronald McDonald is able to massively leverage himself. So even though he invented the original hamburger, now there are 5 million employees around the world who are able to build the same hamburger because they are people who have been hired to follow a system. And of all of the things that have helped me grow my YouTube channel while doing that in my spare time, finding a way to leverage people has been the single biggest needle mover and practically what this looks like in YouTube is in particular outsourcing the editing of videos. So for example, I have not edited a video on this YouTube channel since like 2019, because for the first two years I was editing all my own videos. And then I realized, oh my God, this is taking up so much of my time. And then I read this book and one of my mentors talked me into actually trying to outsource my editing. And then I outsourced my editing and then, oh, oh my God, my life completely changed because now I had loads more spare time to be able to do the things that I actually enjoyed about making videos, like the writing and the reading and research and putting things together. And it also freed up my time to spend more time with family and friends and not burn out and take care of my health and you know, all of that fun stuff. And this is one of the things that our alumni of our part-time YouTuber Academy say, because we have a whole like session where we teach people how to outsource editing and a whole framework and tools and templates, all that kind of stuff. And we get so many comments of people being like, oh my God, I was like reluctant to outsource my editing because I thought, oh, I'm the only one who can edit like me. And then I tried it and I was like, oh my God. And now it's completely changed my life. So if you're watching this and you have a business or you have a YouTube channel or anything like that, and you have some amount of money, then what you can do is that you can outsource the bits of your business or your YouTube channel that you don't personally want to be doing to someone else who's an expert at doing those sorts of things. And hopefully the value that you personally can then generate by having your time freed up is more than the amount that, that person costs. And this is just how business works. For example, if I spent an extra hour or two trying to research a new video and then write the video, that gives this YouTube channel a way higher return than for example, me spending those two hours editing a video. And actually I first discovered the power of outsourcing when I read the four hour work week at the age of around 17. And then in my first business, which is a company that helped people get into med school, me and my brother built some software like medical school question banks. And we actually hired a bunch of outsourced people to do data entry. So trying to take kind of questions from pre-existing exam papers and input them into a database. This would have taken dozens and dozens of hours. I would not have had the time to do this while in med school. But the fact that I was able to pay some amount of money to get someone else to do that meant that I could focus on the coding, which was where I was adding unique value. But when I first started my YouTube channel, I knew in the back of my mind, I need to outsource my editing at some point, but it just took me two years to get there because I just didn't take it seriously. And I really wish I had seen a video. I really wish someone had told me, they like, Ali, sat me down and I was like, look, 
Edit the first 10 videos yourself, that's fine. But then from that point on, you need to outsource your editing because you're completely wasting your own time if you are doing your own editing. And it took me two years to learn that lesson. And this is a story I tell on our YouTuber Academy all the time that like, I really want people to outsource their editing before the two year mark, if they can, if they can afford it. Now, when it comes to outsourcing editing or really anything else in your business, there is one particular platform that you can use that I would recommend. And you might've come across it before. They're called Fiverr. They have been around for a very long time. In fact, my brother, when he was like 14 years old, made his first few dollars on the internet by actually being a free Freelancer on Fiverr, where he was doing psychic readings for $5 or something like that. But in the last like decade plus, Fiverr has transformed from a place where kids like my brother offer psychic readings for a Fiverr into a fully fledged freelance marketplace where almost any skill under the sun, you can find someone who's a specialist in that skill who you can then hire to do the thing for you. Now, a few months ago, it was very exciting because we got an email from the team at Fiverr basically saying that, hey, we'd love to do one of these videos with you. And you might've seen some of these videos on YouTube, like Peter McKinnon's done one, Daniel Schiffer's done one, where they, you know, like I hired strangers to edit my commercial and it, you know, those videos are super interesting. I've watched basically all of them, but we were trying to think for this channel, what would actually be useful as a way of kind of being educational with how you can use a platform like Fiverr to outsource something like video editing. And the solution we've come up with is as follows. So, so far we have talked about the leverage component of making the use of your time and energy. We've talked about how you've got limited time because you've got a day job or whatever. And if you wanna make the most of your time and energy, you can build systems and you can outsource, you can hire people. But as a bit of a way of showing you how you could potentially outsource video editing if you want, I've got five tips that I'm gonna share around personal productivity. But instead of just my editor editing those five tips as part of this video, we thought it would be more interesting if I filmed those five tips as kind of YouTube shorts and we sent it to five different editors on Fiverr at different price points to see what kind of video editing do you get for different price points if you hire freelancers on Fiverr. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be A, a bit of a fun experiment, B, just add a little bit more vibes to the video and C, if you are watching this and you're thinking of taking a YouTube channel seriously or potentially a business and you've not yet experimented with outsourcing, hopefully if this experiment works, it will show you that outsourcing stuff is actually not that hard. And when you start experimenting with outsourcing, whether it's in your YouTube channel or in your business or even in your personal life by hiring a virtual assistant, I've dabbled with that before, it's great. Then applying this leverage of people, being able to hire specialists to do a thing that you don't necessarily want to do or that you're not particularly good at can be a massive way of boosting your own leverage and for making the most of your limited time and energy. So I'm now gonna record these five tips for boosting your personal productivity to make the most of your limited time and energy. And then I'm gonna send those to five different freelancers on Fiverr. And then we're gonna come back in a few days and we'll see how the editing of those tips particularly looks. So see you in a few days. All right, we have all the footage. I'm gonna live react to it and we'll see what these editors have come up with. All right, so the first editor is Senthu DMS. Part three, how to make the most of your limited time and energy by boosting your personal productivity. So I've got five key tips here that I genuinely used all the time when I was growing this YouTube channel while well, working full-time job and that I still use to this day. And each of these five segments are gonna be edited. Ooh, I like the background music. This is nice by a different editor. So let's see what happens. Tip number one is to make the most of small pockets of time. Now, back when I was working as a doctor, I would have these five to 10 minute slots of time in between some of my patients. Maybe I was waiting for blood results to come back or I was waiting for a patient to come back from being wheeled to the ultrasound scan. And in that time, I had the option of making a coffee and going on my phone and scrolling Twitter and Instagram and just generally wasting time. But most of the time, what I would do is because I knew that I cared about growing my YouTube channel and being consistent with it, I would make the most of that five to 10 minutes of time and I would use that to write a few bullet points for a video or alternatively for idea generation or going on Canva or Adobe Spark or whatever app I would use. This is pretty good. It's not quite, it's not ridiculously on brand, but in fairness, we didn't give them our assets. And so he's created this completely from scratch. So again, this, this is pretty solid using and editing a thumbnail. Like a lot can actually be done in five and 10 minutes here and there. And one of the mistakes that we make when it comes to productivity is thinking that we need a whole block of uninterrupted time to be able to do something. So that was editor number one. And honestly, it's not too bad. Like you could outsource your editing to someone with this kind of quality. And it actually would be a pretty solid way of at least starting out a YouTube channel if this is potentially the first person that you're hiring as part of your outsource team. Let's check out editor number two. All right, tip number two is multitask learning through audio. So we've already talked about how one of the things around success on YouTube and business in general is skill. And so you need to find a way to continuously learn the skills that you need to improve. In the case of YouTube, it might be that you're watching a course like my part-time YouTuber Academy, or alternatively watching nice watching these YouTube channels that teach you about the algorithm and stuff or listening to podcasts or reading books written by. So I like how this editor has really understood my style. There are a few tweaks that we could make to it, but broadly, this is pretty, you know, directionally correct people like Daryl Eves that are about how YouTube works. But again, all of that stuff takes time. And so the way that I found to minimize the amount of time that this would take is to multitask my learning along with other things that I was doing using the power of audio. So that would mean that I would listen to podcasts and I would listen to audiobooks and 
because I have YouTube Premium, I can listen to YouTube videos in the background on my phone. And so, for example, when I was driving to work, I'd often be listening to the Video Creators Podcast. And that's keeping me up to date with what's happening in the YouTube algorithm and how are people growing their channels. Or if, for example, I'm doing the laundry and dishes around the house, I will often, even to this day, have some kind of YouTube tutorial type thing open on my phone and I'd have my AirPods in and I'd be listening to that while I'm doing other random stuff around the house. And so that's another way that I was able to boost my own personal productivity by actually overlapping my learning time when it came to improving in these skills alongside to the other things that I was doing, which meant that it didn't take extra time to learn the skills of YouTube. That just kind of happened by default alongside everything else that I was doing. Again, this is pretty good. I prefer this one to the first edit. So this is my favorite one so far because this editor has really understood my style and he's really tried hard to include like the animated background components and the icons and the emojis and all that kind of fun stuff. And also he's done that clever thing where he sort of masks me out or keys me out, whatever the phrase is, and then has the graph in the background. That's all very classy and nice stuff. All right, let's look for editor number three and point number three. Tip number three is something that I like to call productive procrastination. And this is when, unsurprisingly, your procrastination is productive. And so for me, I would procrastinate a lot. You know, I'd come home from work and I'd be like, oh, I should probably edit a video, but like, I can't be bothered right now. And so instead of, for example, playing video games, which has nothing to do with my YouTube channel and is not at all productive, instead, I would watch YouTube videos. I would watch YouTube videos from creators that I admired. And as I'm watching those videos, I'm getting ideas for content and I'm getting ideas for, oh, that's a cool thing I can try in my edit. Or alternatively, I'm browsing like web design inspiration because that's the thing that I like to do. It's productive procrastination because as I'm browsing web design inspiration, I'm getting ideas for kind of gradients I could use and fonts and colors and highlights and underlines and stuff that I can use within my own videos. And so whatever your channel is about, whatever your business does, try and ask yourself that if you want to make the most of your limited time and energy, is there a way that you could add in some procrastination, some productive procrastination? into your life. Again, I'm not saying that every single minute of the day needs to be work, work, work. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with resting and recharging, you know, all about that stuff and feeling good and et cetera, et cetera. But in my case, for example, if I can feed two birds with one scone, and if I can procrastinate in ways that feel good and recharging to me, but in ways that are also helpful to my YouTube channel or the thing that I'm trying to do on the side, then that's another way of me making the most of my limited time and energy. That's also really solid. Um, I love the use of B-roll. He's gone through my previous videos and he's found B-roll from those videos and has added some effects to that, which is really good. And again, generally has understood the brand. So we didn't, again, we didn't send these guys any assets at all. We just told them, hey, do what you want. And he's done a really good job of knowing what fonts I use and, you know, ap appreciating what goes into an Ali Abdal edit, which is, which is great. All right, tip number four is to use the power of momentum. And what this means is that if you're trying to grow a YouTube channel or a business, and again, make the most of your limited time and energy because you're trying to do it in your spare time, you wanna try your best to do a little bit every day. Because when you're doing a little bit every day, you're benefiting from the momentum that's created by that. Whereas if you leave it for like a whole week or two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or whatever, yes, it's totally fine to take a break. But then the problem becomes that it feels like way more of a heavy lift when you get back into it. This is partly why I aim to film a video every single day. It might be a short, it might be a reel, but at least I'm aiming to film something every day because I know that when I take two weeks off of filming because I'm on holiday, the next time I come around and I try to film a video, it's going to be an enormous amount of effort. And so especially for the first three years while I was trying to grow this channel while I had a full-time job, I was really focusing on, you know, consistency and just showing up every day and doing at least something. Maybe that something was just writing one bullet point for a script. Maybe it was filming even just the introduction to a video. Maybe it was editing for five minutes, but just that little bit and showing up even when I didn't necessarily feel like it allowed me to sustain the momentum and momentum often and drives motivation, which makes it easier to take action. And then all this stuff goes into this virtuous cycle. So try your best to do it just a little bit every day. If you can do that, you're making the most of your limited time and energy. So clearly they edited this as a short, uh, which in fairness was what we were gonna do initially. And then I realized I actually filmed for longer than a minute for most of them, but glad that he edited this one as a short. And honestly, this is a pretty solid short. We've been making some banger shorts on the channel recently, and this is almost to the standard of one of our full-time editors who we literally have on staff full-time to make shorts like this. I like the dynamism in the edit. I like the text. I like the fact that he's really just kind of used his own creativity to add in those animations, even though I give him literally zero instructions about exactly how to do this. So well played. And tip number five is one of my absolute classics that I've been peddling for years, and that is to focus on enjoying the journey. Yes, it's all well and good building a YouTube channel, and yes, a YouTube channel can completely change your life. But actually, you also wanna be trying to enjoy the journey along the way, trying to enjoy every step of the journey as much as you can. Now, this is great from a life satisfaction and happiness perspective, but it's also great in helping you make the most of your limited time and energy. Because when the work that you're doing is enjoying and engaging, that work then becomes energizing. And that is a way where we can solve the energy problem. Yes, you get home from the end of the day of work or school or whatever you're doing, and you feel drained of energy because your job sucks or whatever that might be. But if you can find a way to A, enjoy the job itself, which is great, 
but B, try and find a way to get enjoyment and engagement from the work you're doing on your business or your YouTube channel. That will actually replenish your energy in a way that like few other things would. So for example, for me, I found ways to make editing videos really enjoyable. Even though two years later, I decided to outsource the editing, especially in the early days, for me, editing became quite fun. I would find a way to track my progress. I would find a way to turn it into a game. I'd find a way to take personal satisfaction and joy in the little things I was doing to the videos, you know, the little bits of salt I was adding into the edits. And that made video editing a profoundly energizing activity. So I didn't feel as if I oh, it was, it was draining my energy and I didn't have enough energy to do editing. Obviously it was still nice when I was able to outsource it because then I could do other energizing activities that were high leverage. But until then, and until I was making enough money from the channel to be able to afford outsourcing editing, finding a way to enjoy the journey is just the ultimate hack to personal productivity. Again, this is also not bad. It hasn't quite gotten the start of the channel, but there, there, there were definitely some elements in this, some of the B-roll, some of the kind of overlays with a little thing on the corner that were a really solid understanding of what my vibe is and then trying to recreate that in editing software. And again, I didn't give this person any instructions at all, literally just gave them the, the raw camera file from, from my recording and they've turned it into this. So if you're considering outsourcing editing, this is a pretty reasonable range of what you can expect if you outsource it on Fiverr, for example. And honestly, this leverage of people being able to leverage up your own time by using people that you get from places like Fiverr means that whatever you're doing, whatever kind of business you're trying to run, it becomes way easier to do as a part-time thing. And then because you've had experience of hiring and outsourcing while you've built the business part-time, if you do decide to go full-time on it, like I've done with my business and my YouTube channel, then you've got the skills to be able to work with more people and continue to leverage up your time and your ability to create value for the world with whatever your business does. So I'm gonna put links to all of the freelancers that we've used for this video down in the video description so you can check out them specifically if you'd like to. And also if you're interested in potentially using Fiverr to outsource editing or literally any other aspect of your business, then you can head over to the link in the video description. And if you use the coupon code ALI10 ALI10 at checkout, then up until the 31st of December, 2023, you can get 10% off any hire that you make on Fiverr. And if you're a creator or an influencer, you might also like to check out the Fiverr Influencer Program. This is aimed at micro to mid size creators, so you don't need an enormous audience of millions of people. But it does mean that if you do want to share authentic and engaging content about Fiverr, then there's a ton of benefits for you, like Fiverr credits and commissions and flat rate revenues and so much more. The application process is super fast and easy, and there is a link to the program in the description if you want to check it out. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you might like to check out my completely free five-day part-time YouTuber crash course, which is a completely free email course. You just enter your email, and then every day for five days, I will send you a long-ass email with loads and loads of tips and strategic advice about how you can grow a YouTube channel completely from scratch and in your spare time. That's completely free. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe anytime, but people have literally emailed us back saying, oh my God, I would have paid for this. And it's completely free, just five days of emails and you get incredible information. And if you enjoyed this video, you might like to check out this video over here, which is all about what I would do if I was starting YouTube completely from scratch today. And it's a step-by-step -step system that I would use to grow my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in that video over there. Bye-bye.